Hiya then folks, welcome to episode 3 of Winging It, with me the tight Yorkshireman. Here we are, trying to do our poor man's electric boat. That's the boat there as you can see behind us, the grey one. What I'm going to do on this programme is we're just going to run through a little bit of the catch up to see where we are, see what we've managed to do over the last couple of weeks, where we've more or less got us to the stage where we can start actually wiring it in. So I'm going to show you a few clips of, uh, of what we've been up to. I've got in my head this is going to look a bit like if you remember going back to the days of the A-Team they used to get trapped in a cave, there'd be an old truck there, there'd be a welder then they'd run a little bit of VT that showed sparks everywhere, welding and then at the end they'd come flying out the cave in some great vehicle they'd made that's what I'm thinking this next bit of video is going to look like we'll see though the A-team. No A-team music, because we're not allowed because of copyright. Weren't quite as dramatic. But we did have James and Kathy's song, Drifting Along, which is nearly as good as the A-team tune. You will have seen in that video as well, there was a Simon, who's the, the technical guru, and his dad Trev helping out. We were, we were the ones building it all up. Uh, you'll see a bit more of them as the project progresses. Well, hopefully you'll see a lot more of Simon, because, like I say, is the brains behind the operation. So let's go and have a quick look round the boat now, see what we've actually got installed, see where we are, and obviously see what else we've got to do. So let's have a look at the batteries then. Uh, obviously as you can see we've welded up a little cage. Um, what we've done is we've done them in sets of four, because obviously the batteries are basically 12 volts each, and we're running a 48 volt system. So we'll wire them in series, which obviously the four at 12 volt gives us the 48 volts. Uh, they are lithium batteries, uh, they're rated at 138 amp hour per battery. We're going to have 16 of them, I'm sure somebody who's really clever can work out exactly what sort of power we've got, what it's going to take to charge it and everything. Frankly I'm winging it, I can't be bothered to do any of that kind of nonsense. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we've got them here, welded up into the cages, fastened there, 
so that they can be, they will eventually be bolted to the side of the boat so that if anybody's ramming us out of the way or anything, they're, uh, they're not going to go flying everywhere. So yeah, once, once the wiring series, they'll come down, each set of batteries will come down to a set of contactors. Uh, they basically act as switches so that at any one time, we're not necessarily using all 16 batteries. We can, if you like, kind of switch between battery packs uh, using the contactors. Um, yeah, so that's the batteries. The wires from there will then go over to the control unit, which will be mounted just inside the boat in a nice dry place because obviously the uh, all the controllers and the electronics we don't really want out here where it might get a little bit wet when it's raining. Right, so now we come on to the good bit, the bit it's all about, the electric motor itself. This is the bad boy. 48 volt, 4.3 kilowatt electric motor. It's actually from a forklift truck. I was under the impression it was from an electric bus, but turns out it's actually from a forklift truck. So, uh, but yeah, as you can see, what we've done, we've uh, we've welded up a cage, a team style, as uh, as we say. Um, what that cage does is obviously it holds the the gearbox and the motor, obviously using the the bell housing, all together, nice and tight. And also, while it's there, what what we've done is we've put the the, the framework on the original engine mounts. So that's keeping the gearbox actually located where it was originally, which should mean it lines up nicely to the uh, to the prop and everything. The other thing that putting it on the original engine mounts means is we've got adjustments so we can move it up and down and we can actually move it left and right so we can get it nice and accurately lined up to the prop, which we have bought a new coupling for. So yes, even the tight Yorkshireman does occasionally have to spend money. That's obviously the coupling that goes down there between the end of the gearbox and the, the, the prop shaft there. So uh, yeah, so basically that, that framework means that we can line it all up and get it nice, nicely lined up so it's all in, a, all in a lovely straight line. Question that keeps cropping up is why are we using the gearbox? Why are we not just using the motor and having it going forwards and backwards as we need forwards and reverse? We're not 100% certain that we've got the right idea of doing it that way but what we're thinking is that the gearbox has obviously tried and tested it's been on narrow boats since they stopped using horses um, so obviously that that sort of technology works and it does mean that the the control system that we've had to have designed is slightly simpler because all it's doing is spinning the motor one way it's not having to spin it one way and then the other way so we're joining the the gearbox to the motor using the original bell housing that fastened the old BMC 1500 diesel engine to the gearbox and I think as we've seen we've we've had the the center of that board out so that the two shafts line up nicely in the middle there what we're hoping to do with that coupling that we've still not managed to suss out fully yet is we're hoping to build into it basically what we, we think is kind of a, a torque converter so it'll be a large disc that sits in there in the middle of the the two the two parts joined what that should do, because it's a large disc, it's a bit like on some of the older, more traditional narrowboats, they have quite a small diesel engine with a big flywheel. What the big flywheel does is that creates the torque that in effect pushes the boat along. We're thinking the same sort of idea with this, that the, the large disc inside will in effect be the torque converter that will mean that the, the motor's not having to draw as much power from the batteries at any one time. We're not 100% certain on whether that system's going to work or not but we're gonna try it. That's what we're winging it for. So, we've got the motor connected to the gearbox. What we've now got to sort out is the control system, getting all that installed. The control system has been designed so that it's what's, what's sort of called a soft start system. So that as we turn the motor on and it starts spinning, it's not kicking in with all its torque and all its power. What it's doing is it's bringing it in gradually. A bit like when you press the accelerator on your car when it's in gear, you don't instantly get the revs and the power, it builds up gradually. Obviously the idea of that is it's much kinder on the gearbox and all the gears and the couplings and everything. You're not suddenly just getting an almighty amount of power. Of which, again a few people have asked what's the, what's the speeds and the ratings and everything of the, the, the motor. In all honesty, all that we know is it's 48 volt and it's 4.3 kilowatt which apparently sort of works out to have been about the equivalent of six or seven horsepower but we're not really sure on all that 
we're going to find out as we get going just exactly how it all works. So yeah, so uh, as you can see, motor's roughly in place. We are going to need to tweak it a little bit, but we're uh, we're pretty confident in that. So I'm uh, yeah, it's all coming together. Right then folks, I think that about brings us to the end of this one, episode 3. Um, obviously you've seen there, we've now kind of got the batteries in place, we've got the gearbox and the motor sort of roughly lined up, bit of work obviously to do on that one, getting it all coupled up. But it is kind of getting towards the, the cables and wiring stage. We do need to put a few boards and, and bits and bobs around the boat now so that we can run the cabling and, and mount the control system, things like that. So uh, that's what we're cracking on with now. Hopefully by the time we get to the next vlog, it'll be uh, actually putting those cables and wires in and starting to see the project really start to come together. Fingers crossed. Obviously I need to say a really big thank you to Simon and Trev. Obviously uh, they've done uh, loads of work for me or with me to, uh, to get it to where we are now. Must also say a big thank you to James Thomas and Cathy Atom who've done the music for me. I'll put the links to their, uh, their own pages in the description. Have a look at their music. It is really good. Make sure you like the, the page and comment on it. And most important, if you click the subscribe, you will get notifications when we put each episode on. And obviously as we put each episode on, that fingers crossed means we've got a step further to, uh, to actually getting the, the boat going. So from me, the tight Yorkshireman, trying to do our poor man's electric boat, we're going to carry on winging it. <laughs>